Good morning and welcome to presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish as we celebrate the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. If you're visiting us today, we welcome you and invite you to worship with us again. During Mass, we invite you to listen to the words of the song and allow them to lift you up into prayer. Please rise as you are able. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, sing alleluia. Shout with gladness, dance for joy, O come before the Lord, and play for God on glad tambourine. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, what a beautiful summer day for us to come together to give our Lord worship and praise. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity so that unhindered in mind and body alike we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with them those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this, on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the, tr with the trumpet of God, 
will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will first rise. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week in the Catholic spirit, Bishop Cousins wrote a column about All Saints Day. In it, he said that the goal of his life by the virtue of his baptism was to become holy in imitation of the holiness of Jesus. He went on to say that one of the greatest renewals that came from the Second Vatican Council was the emphasis on the fact that every member of the Church is called to holiness. How do we get there? Wisdom is a good starting place. Our readings today center on wisdom, at least the first and the gospel do. They talk about wisdom as something very important in our lives. Now, wisdom in the Old Testament has a long history. It's used to describe some of the people that built the Ark of the Covenant in the Exodus story, the artisans and the craftsmen who made that tent of meeting and fashioned the tabernacle for the Ten Commandments to go in and Aaron's rod and some of the manna that was provided for them in the desert. It's also used of the craftsmen who were later on in history who, who made Solomon's temple a place for God to dwell in on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And so we see that when wisdom is used in this way, it describes these people 
who use their talents, their gifts, their abilities in a good way, a way to build up the people of God and provide for them. It talks about them using their knowledge in a very practical way, in a way that will foster faith in the people of God. Later on, though, wisdom is described as something a little bit different. And not only using your abilities to fashion things like the craftsmen of old, but instead more like a judgment of knowing between right and wrong. Solomon is perhaps the best known example of this in the scripture. As he became king, God asked him to ask him for anything, and he would give it to him and grant it. And Solomon, in his wisdom, did not ask for money, or wealth, or riches, or a long life, or an easy life. Instead, he asked for that gift of wisdom that he might lead the people well, that he might be a good king, and that he might be able to discern what God wants for the people. His wisdom was so well known that God granted that request, that prayer, and answered it yes. So well known that people from all around the world flocked to him to ask him for decisions, to seek out his wisdom, to question him and find out where that gift came from. Wisdom in our first reading later on in scripture in this book of wisdom is personified as a woman because both of the names the terms used both in the Greek Old Testament called the Septuagint and the Hebrew Old Testament, the word for wisdom is of female gender. So it's natural that the author would personify wisdom as a woman, seeking out people that she can impart that gift to. This great gift that was present before creation of the world, that God in his wisdom fashioned the world for us, the whole universe, and placed us on this beautiful blue planet to care for it. This wisdom that was so perfect that he fashioned all of creation for his honor and glory. This wisdom seeks us out. And the Book of Wisdom says that whenever we seek her, we can find her. For she wants to give us that gift, that gift of wisdom so that we too can make right judgment and know the heart of God that is his law. For the scripture says that the beginning of wisdom is the knowledge and love of God and of his commandments. And as we seek out those commandments, as we pray and seek out God's heart in our lives, that gift of wisdom comes to us through the Holy Spirit and his gifts. When you and I were confirmed, the fullness of those seven gifts of the Spirit became ours to use as we will, to ask God to keep those alive in our heart. And one of those gifts is wisdom. So you and I have that gift. We prayed for it. We obtained it. We sought it out. And we have it. In the New Testament, that gift is described a little differently. It's contrasted with the wisdom of this world and how it differs from the wisdom of God. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians that Jews demand signs and Greeks, the philosophical people, want wisdom. But he says, we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block for the Jews and foolishness for the Gentiles. But to those who are called, he says, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. James also picks up this theme in his book when he writes that the wisdom from above is pure 
and peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. There's another one of those lists of that list of the attributes of how our behavior, how our lives can reflect God's love and his law. If we have that wisdom inside us, we will show that we are pure, that we are peaceable. We will show gentleness. We will be compliant. We will be full of mercy and our actions will bear good fruit. And we won't be inconstant or insincere. This great gift of God that is given us through the Holy Spirit, this gift of wisdom is ours if we just ask for it. We only have two Sundays left after this till the end of the liturgical year and the beginning of a new year in the church calendar. And as I said last week, these last weeks are often given to us with these great themes to look back on our lives, to see this last year, how we've come forward, how we've grown in the knowledge and love of God, and how we want to do better in that same thing next year, and what changes we need to make to make that happen. This beautiful theme of wisdom is one that helps us because it always reminds us to be prepared. Of those ten virgins waiting for the bridegroom, five were wise and five were foolish. The foolish ones used up all their oil and didn't bring any extra. The wise virgins brought this extra oil with them so that in the middle of the night when the bridegroom came, they would have enough to go out and meet him with their lamps alight. They saw the future. They recognized to be prepared for God's coming, for the coming of the bridegroom. They planned ahead. They had enough wisdom in their hearts to look forward beyond the immediate. Not to get hung up in the present, but to look forward and how to achieve that goal of meeting the bridegroom. We too are called to be prepared. For as St. Paul says, we do not know the hour when the bridegroom will come. So let us live our lives in wisdom. May the wisdom of God be with us and always at work in us. Amen. Coming together as a people of God, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Virgin and before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Knowing how much our Heavenly Father loves us and desires us to come to him as his beloved children, we bring to him now these petitions. For the church, that we may firmly believe in the promises of Christ and be vigilant in keeping ourselves ready for his return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil and civic leaders, that they may rely on God's divine law as a source of wisdom and build a spirit of cooperation that promotes peace and healing in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all health care workers, caregivers, and first responders, may they and their families be protected and strengthened by the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on our veterans and their families, and for the protection of those who are still serving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of those whom we are praying for on our parish prayer line, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound and shut in, that they may not succumb to loneliness and despair, but be drawn to Christ's presence in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from addiction, mental illness, cancer, disease, and other ailments, may they find healing and comfort in the name of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called to the banquet of eternal life, especially Betty Morrison and those listed in the Book of the Dead, and for those who grieve for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mr. and Mrs. Walter Kurkowski, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your great love for us, you gave us your only Son to save us, to nourish us, and to give us life eternal. And so now we turn to you with these prayers spoken and unspoken in the silence of our hearts, and we ask you to make them your own. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I has not seen
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have, and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. From a distance, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take with Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
My dear brothers and sisters, those of you who are live streaming, I encourage you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. So a big reminder that next weekend we're, we're going to have a big celebration as we're able because we'll be celebrating our parish feast day, the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So although this, uh, that day actually falls on the 21st, we're celebrating it a little earlier because uh, that same weekend that our feast day actually falls on, we'll be celebrating Jesus Christ as King of the universe. So I think her mother would want that instead. So, because we're trying our best to celebrate in the way that we can as a parish community, as a family, there's going to be some activities going on, some of which are already taking place right now. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please check out our Facebook uh, parish page because the CCW is having a virtual boutique. So lots of crafts are being sold as well as goods. Um, the CCW holiday jars are available for purchase as well as Jan's Sloppy Joe's. So make sure you order ahead of time because next Saturday morning, uh, it'll be for pickup only. So we ne you need to order today so that the vendors can all have a chance to get all of the goods ready for you for pickup next Saturday. So make sure you check it out. Uh, after the Mass is next weekend, the 5 p.m. and the 9.30 a.m., there'll be a treat bag for all families to take home because we aren't able to sit together and chat as we would on uh, Donut Sundays, uh, there'll be a little goodie for you to take home with you with your uh, kids if you have kids. And if not, well, it's all for you then. <laughs> and there'll be a little prayer card and a medal for you as well to remind you of our Blessed Mother and how dear she is to us. 
And then on Saturday night, after the 5 p.m. mass at 7 p.m., the men's club will be doing their raffle ticket drawing here in the church. So it will be live streamed for all of us, for all of you, to watch from home through our Facebook page. So if you bought a raffle ticket, make sure you tune in because your, if your name gets called, you want to make sure you can rejoice at home, right? Just don't break anything if you don't win the big prize, though. Uh, but then also during the, if, even if you didn't get a raffle ticket, though, tune in because there'll be some trivia about our Blessed Mother. So something, some, a way for us all to still be engaged and learn more about who our mother is for us and how we should love her more deeply after knowing who she is. Um, so make sure you do that. And also, not necessarily tied to our feast day, but also very appropriate next weekend, Uh, And I forgot to mention this last night, so please spread the word. Our Loaves and Fishes ministry has been nominated uh, to receive the Archdiocesan Stewardship Award for for participation. So there's a couple, uh, there's uh, our parish uh, group as well as another group that's, you know, are both competing for this uh, award. So that'll take place next Saturday morning. So uh, say a prayer for our Loaves and Fish ministries, uh, Loaves and Fishes ministry. whom continue to serve uh, those who have no no food to eat, uh, to thank them and to hold them up to our Lord. Uh, In front of you, you see this book. This is our Book of the Dead, and many of you are familiar with it. And during this month of November, we we remember all of our deceased loved ones, and we pray for them and hold them up so that they can quickly go into our Father's kingdom. So if you haven't already, feel free to write down the names of all your beloved dead, in this book. Uh, You'll find that there's no pen at this book, so bring your own pen up here, okay? Uh, Enjoy the last hours of summer and, you know, make, really make the most of it, right? Get outside. I I know there's a big game on at noon, but, you know, enjoy uh, enjoy this gift that we've been given and enjoy it with loved ones. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. God who's giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store. Nature's wonder Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, grave's shattered door. Gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of us. and time are ours for pressing toward the goals of Christ your Son all at peace in health and freedom races joined the church made one now direct our daily labor lest we strive for self alone.